If you've ever been working on your car and this happens, well, this is why I wear a silicone ring. This happened to my buddy whose name I will not say, but starts with LS and ends in George. He burnt his finger because a positive battery terminal grounded out his wedding ring against the car and severely burned his finger. Therefore, he always wears a silicone ring now and so do I. These tough rings are currently buy one, get two free at toughring.com with free shipping if you use code RPM. There's a link in the description where you can get them. They've got like 20 different colors. They're super sick, go check them out. Let's cut to some riverboat updates. of the trailer are absolutely incredible. The level of detail we're putting into it just to make sure that it drives down the road straight, looks good at the same time, and it's just completely well built is incredible. So here's a couple of rendering drawings of this thing and I am super stoked to see it. All right guys, the other time I said that looks like we had everything for the trailer, I was wrong. We were missing the uh, tongue. So we ordered a 20 foot tongue, it's called a double square. As you can see, it's got that support in the middle, this way it doesn't bend. So as of right now, we got 20 foot, of course we're gonna cut it, but we went extra to make sure we had enough. This thing. How long is it? 30 foot. Even. Wait. The frame 30 foot, and then the, uh, the and then the nose portion is. No, no, no. The whole thing is 30 foot. Yeah. And then we're gonna have a uh, tongue that's gonna come out another 10 foot out of the front. <laughs> oh my so. god! It's like a 40 foot trailer for this long tail. And uh, so basically, they got the frame on it right now. They, uh, you know, obviously got to slap axles on it. I'm going to show you the wheels right now. But, you know, we got accessories to build on it and supports, and they're going to U-bolt everything. I mean, this guy at Apogee Industries just does it right, man. For all of your trailer needs or upholstery, I'm going to put his info in the description below so you guys can hit him up. If you need a custom trailer or a new axle or freaking wheels and tires, freaking new interior on your boat, whatever, this is the guy right here. Excited, man. Let, let me hear what you have to say in the comments about this. So we haven't, we're trying to figure out how to do the cooling system. So we have two pickups here. One of them goes to the air water intercooler and the other one goes to cooling the engine. Now the hoses would come together and came up behind the transom right here. Now, ideally we would like to not have them come up behind the transom. We would like to go through the swim platform, but the swim platform is approximately six to eight inches thick and there's no access to get inside of here. So really there's, you either drill a hole and do kind of a nice flush mount like they kind of did here or just come around the side. Either way, not an ideal situation, but we're gonna figure it out. I'd love to hear your input. Sam, we're gonna have to put our noodles on this one. I'm telling you, you know, you it has such pretty lines on the wood and everything. You gotta be careful where we put it about drilling any extra holes in it. I know. We'll have to, at the start, just put it across the back to see what it looks like and how it functions. And if it functions just as well, we may have to, like here, if you come up under here, and over, see that one hole right down there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We may find a way we can use that one right there if we just have to look at the pump and see wherever we put the hoses, is the pump still got good volume to it, you know? Right. right. So let's say we're going through there. Is the pump still got good volume to it if we start up in there and move? You know around? what we? I, I have an interesting idea. What if we had Brian at R and D Concepts make a really nice billet piece that's just kind of a pass through like this? So you'd run the actual A N line all the way through the center of it, mm -hmm. but it would just be like a nice piece that would you know sit flush on the surface. That would do. How much traffic is going to be back here on this? None. Nobody can stand back here. Okay, no foot traffic. No foot traffic. No foot traffic. No foot traffic. No That would do. That would do, that but would we'd have, we still need to come up with a way to seal 
between the AM line and the plate, you know, because otherwise water's going to get into the hole. Well, what, what's he got there for the, what do they got for the seal on that one? Oh uh, yeah, I guess that goes up straight through, huh? Probably just silicone. You know, 3M makes one, plus I like an advertisement, that um, it's slow to cure. It takes like 10 or 12 hours to cure. That's fine. But it does great. Yeah, it's what I use on uh, a lot of times if I've got a bad water pump. What do you think about using the timing belt as a little rubber padding here? You like that? Oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where you got to that, but that'll do. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. That'll do. That's a Sam shirt right there. That'll yeah, do. Right there. That'll do right there. That'll do. That'll do. Mr. Sam, yeah. and on the back it says, that'll do. That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> Buffed out, that'll do. Yeah. That'll do. As y'all know, I'm getting the riverboat dressed up, and so I'm at Daniel. Daniel, what do you got cooking over here? Oh, brother. Does that <laughs> look good? So before, these were mismatched colors of, like, red or just, like, plain old stainless, but Daniel's hooking us up with some powder coating. Let's check these puppies out. Dude, it looks so much better. Let's bring out the light a little bit. Yeah. Holy cow. What a difference, man. You did such a good job. I love it. Thank <laughs> you. Are you pumped about it too? Yeah, check them out. Dude. It's got a nice little texture to it, but nothing it too crazy. It really does. It's going to yeah. clean it up a lot. I love it. Heck yeah, man. Nice work. So before, I just had, uh, it was just hose end on here with plants, and so he welded AN bungs on here and then powder coated it. Same thing with this intercooler, engine plate, engine mount, the rudder. I mean, everything just looks freaking awesome. You did an awesome job, dude. Thanks, man. Again, plug in Daniel in the description. If you need any powder coating or fab work in the west side of Florida, hit your boy up. Dylan, brother. Welcome. What's your first impression of the boat, man? I love it. It's a lot bigger in person, isn't it? It is. Dude, what are you doing here today? Why are you here right now? Oh, we're gonna put some uh, decking in the bottom of the boat. Yes. A little less slippery. So you don't... I love it. But we're gonna have to hide some teak in order to do that. Yeah. Well, but so it'll be worth it. It will. It will. Guys, I Dylan owns it. and operates a company called Ocean Grip, and they did the decking on our Yellowfin. And I was a little bit hesitant at first because we had never done the complete boat before. But ever since I did it, everyone loves it. And this boat gets extremely slippery since it's a lacquered or varnished teak when it's wet. And so I immediately thought of Dylan and I was like, I got to get him out here. And you're actually going to 3D scan this thing. Is that right? We are. We'll, uh, we'll take the scanner, put it in the boat, measure everywhere you want to do it at, bring it back, put it on the computer, uh, convert the file, clean it all up, put any logos, designs, cool. um, anything you want. So I'm thinking definitely do it on these flat boards here. I probably want to eliminate the upholstery and then just, you know, and probably on the other hand. Really? But I also want to talk about the engine. The engine, when we got it back in the boxes, as you saw in the previous videos, we didn't notice the damage that was on the rod bearings and they are damaged. So not only that, but the pistons are scored up. So Daniel Diesel is really helping us out. He sent the pistons out to be recoded. We got new piston rings and we got new rod bearings coming from Thailand right now. So the engine is coming back together slowly, but surely and done the right way. So as we are doing that, I am completely redoing all of the water lines and fuel lines so that those systems are absolutely perfect. It before was kind of put together with garden hose and to be honest, it would have worked. It would have been just fine just bolting it right up, but I kind of got a spark back in me as if I had Dr. Pepper again where I wanted to get the fittings and I wanted to change it all to AN and I wanted to just do it right so that when I'm out on the river or hanging with the boys or showing this thing off around the country and to YouTube that it's a really nice piece and it's something that I can be super proud of. So we're getting everything powder coated. We're getting a custom trailer. We're building the engine so that it's perfect so that when we rip this thing and start making videos and content with it to share with all of y'all, it is going to be an amazing boat. So let's get to it. Cooper's first impression of the riverboat. Would cool. you drive it? 
with your wife to a sandbar. <laughs> Would Bronte like it? She might like the idea of it, but I don't know how well this thing's gonna do going to a sandbar with that long. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how long it is? Oh my God. It sounds cool on paper, but man. Should we we should take it off and put it behind it so you can literally see how long it is. It's monstrous. It is insane. It's like double the length of this whole thing. Here's the deal. I thought about uh, wait until we have some significant progress on the tie boat before making a video. And then I remember back to the old Dr. Pepper days of vlogging every little bit. So I'm just going to start recording. I'm going to time lapse a lot of stuff. You guys are going to see me cut some holes in the boat right now. My boy Wiley, who uh, started the company Yellowfin Boats, was just here, and he gave me some really good guidance on how to run the water lines and the fuel lines. And he said to work your way from the back forward, and so that's what I'm gonna do. He's like, just start cutting shit. You just gotta get into it. And I'm having a little hesitation because I just want to do it so right, but I just gotta, I just gotta man up, get it done. So let's start cutting some holes and stuff the back of the boat here. I've got two styles of pass-throughs from Motion Raceworks. One that is larger, one that's a Dash 16. And we gotta feed two pickup lines. This is each one of the pickup lines. For example, it sits right here. It goes into a Dash 10. And while I was thinking that I mount this single double right here, but what I'm actually gonna do is do one on each side. The hole is hollow inside. I want to put a clip right here so you can see what I'm talking about. But I think if I did one on each side, it would look a lot cleaner kind of coming up from both sides. So we're going to do one large dash 20 on both sides. It's not going to go from a dash 10 to a dash 20. It's going to go from a dash 10 to a dash 20 ORB at fitting. So, I mean, the pressure and the size of the lines will all be the same. But I think it'll look cleaner having a line from each side kind of go up and go to either side of the rudder. Listen, I don't want to do this, but I'm about to cut a hole in the transom of this boat. And it is so that I can access my pass-throughs for the water. It's going to be worth it. We're going to end up covering this transom with some ocean grip. But I got to do it. My hands are not as small as you would expect them to be. I can't reach up under there. I don't think anybody probably could. So I'm going to use this, this oscillating tool, this multi-tool, whatever you want to call it. I call it the cut anything 9,000. And we're gonna cut a hole large enough for me to fit my large hand in an AN wrench and any other tools we could possibly need right here. And guess what? I am not going to measure this out. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. If this worries you, I would suggest looking away because I will not lie, I am worried right now. I've introduced probably five people in this video who are helping out on the long tail. But now, this is probably what I'm most excited for, and that's the lighting. So, we got Waylon here. Go ahead and introduce yourself. What's up, guys? My name is Zeb Land. I am the regional manager for Whelan in the state of Florida. Yeah, and you uh, put lights on Garrett's truck and the lights at the track. And yes, sir. For anything we put lights on, we try to put lights on it. What about a diesel long tail Italian riverboat? Um, I don't. I think I've done that one before. <laughs> what do you think we should do? Um, we need red and green up front. Okay. White on the back to make her legal. Okay. But what about, uh, what else? I don't know. Just wanted to run it by you. What are your functions? Do we want it to stand out and have other flashing lights on it? I think we do. Do we want it to be solid white where I can go nighttime fishing? Okay. Like or bow fishing? Like bow fishing. Oh, dude, that'd be such a cool I idea. I mean, because you can easily do down lights going into the water off of it. So we do have an issue. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there right now. <laughs> is that there's two holes here, okay? This hole goes to the floor here. So it goes to about here. And then there's an empty space. 
that is non-accessible, that fills with water as a, as a ballast. So I'm not sure how far it comes forward, but there is a point in which it is hollow underneath. And you can see that on the back of the boat. So if you check it out back here, this whole section fills with water when you're at idle and it's used as a ballast okay. so that uh, it doesn't tip over with the weight of the engine so high. Sure, because you put a big engine on a little boat. Ex up high. That so, goes really uh, fast. That goes really fast. So I don't know. Power supply. Yeah. Running a normal 12 volt. Yeah. So we can easily come off of that. Well, check it. Oh, I got power. this relay box. Mm -hmm. So I have a, I already have a light relay that can power your box. Do you have a box? Is that, is that how it's set we up? We have all sorts of different things. We can cater this however you're looking for, where it could easily be an eagle, easy toggle switch on and off, um, just like we would do on a Raptor. Yeah. We can control it where you press certain buttons and it'll turn solid white or your red and greens will come on. Yeah. Your different sides of the boat. And what is your what is your first thought? Like when you first see it, what do you think what would you want to do if it was your boat? When I think through the brand, yeah. I would make it where it does stick out. Yeah. Your normal green and reds up at the front to show the different sides of the boat are easy ones to do. But when you do like or a red if we did like a you know, a red LED over here. Mm -hmm. It's also other colors as well. Correct. Right? We so can make that multifunction where you're still going to have your reds. You put it in party with... mode. Correct. Got it. And then where, when we need it to be red and on, cool. Here's switch number one. Yep. And then as soon as I want to do other things with this and make an appearance as somebody would normally do. Yeah. With this company, then I would have some things flashing or extra bright. Right. Depending on where you want to have it. All right, guys, that is all I'm going to leave you with this. And when we finish the lights, it's going to be a surprise. I don't want to give you guys any more than what we've already just showed you, but we know we're going to spice it up a little bit. And I'm super excited because I've, I've known of your, your company for my entire life. So it's really cool that we're partnering up on this. <laughs> what I'm about to show you is the trailer on an axle and it's got the tongue on it as well. Now there's only one axle, it's gonna be two, but how many pounds are they rated for? 3,500. Each, yeah, 3,500 each, and we want the big boy 11 ply tires, right? 12 ply. 12 ply tires, 15 inch wheels. Yep. 15 inch wheels, and it is unbelievable. I mean, it is so big, and the boat's gonna look incredible. So I'm gonna turn the camera around right now so you can see it. Brother, you are killing it, putting in them late night hours. Look at how good this looks without leaf springs. And these are the 72 inch wide axles, right? 72 inches, yeah. Versus? Uh, we were, I was thinking of doing it smaller, so we would have had to put springs and everything. So probably about 60 inches wide frame. Yeah. But we went wider, so it'd be more stable. Yep, and obviously with the bigger ply tires, I knew that right off the get go, I wanted to go bigger ply tires, and we're gonna put, we're, we're gonna obviously put the other axle right here. Yep. Yep, so I mean, this is gonna be where most of our center of gravity is anyways, but look at how long it goes all the way to the front. It is absolutely massive, and we went with I-beam, we considered tubing, but I told him, build this trailer like it's your own. And so that's what he's doing over here at Apogee Industries in Venice, Florida. Dude, the weirdest thing is like, I've been talking to a couple of my buddies and I've brought up the fact that you're building this trailer and they've been like, oh, I've been there. <laughs> I've gone there for trailer parts. I've gone there for this and that. And to be honest with you, I'd never really heard of you before you and I had met, but it seems like everybody in town has already been here, which is so cool. Like, I, I just, I respect it, respect you so much for that. It's Apogee, man. Yeah, the, it high, is. the highest point is either the best or nothing. The best or nothing. I love it, man, because I'm the same way with my business. And it's actually like, we're only about a mile apart. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. over the bridge. Yeah, literally right over the bridge on the island. Oh, my God, I'm so hyped. I'm, like, getting chills right now. So, obviously, the boat's going to come all the way forward, and it's going to rake up all somewhere. Oh, all the way. The boat stops right freaking here. Are you kidding me? And this is only 28 feet right here, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a 28 foot boat. And the boat is almost 30, so uh, we're gonna have the sticking out a little bit. and then. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
It's gonna be insane. Yeah. I'm gonna have to have and some kind of mud flash. So what I did, so what I did here, I went out six feet for now for the tongue. Okay. Um, but we can always shorten it. It's not a big deal. What's your thought there? I'm thinking probably four and a half. Better longer than shorter or That's white? A, well, it depends. You said you want to put a toolbox in there for some stuff and. Some yeah, we'll put a toolbox, and then obviously we're gonna have a spare wheel and tire that'll match. But with the way your boat goes, I mean, dude, you're at almost three foot high here, so we might be able to do a custom toolbox underneath the. Floor. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. We're gonna have our boy Dan Sal over here. He's right around the corner. He's the one that did all the powder coating for the boat, but he throws dimes, and so. Yeah, I could use the resources at Garrett's shop, but those guys are so building such epic race cars for that channel. And I've got great resources all around me here in Venice, and then I don't have to drive 45 minutes back and forth. It's, it's a no-brainer to support these other local businesses so that we can all build each other and build up the community. So I'm so hyped about it, man. What I want to do with this, this is actually me and you talking about, I guess we'll do <laughs> yeah, yeah. video. Uh, I want to put in our logo in here since we got the Apogee. Oh, heck so yeah. So I want our logo. Uh, Dan, Daniel out here at the fab shop, he could do it. He does 100%. it. 100% really we are yep. putting the Apogee logo right yep. here and stickers down the side. We're going to be loading up with the Apogee Industries decals for sure, brother. Yep. Or even it. like a laser etched plate. That's you know? what it is. It's going to be a plate. Yeah. A plate that's going to get welded up, but Dan's going to, it's probably going to be a double plate. Yep. Um, oh, like do one layer and then do the, the, the laser one on top, on top of it. Yeah. That would be really clean. Yep. My heart's racing right now. And it's a freaking trailer. Will you, will you hold this for a second? Yeah. Look at, since he built this thing out of aluminum, I can, I can literally pick it up. Now I do see a lot of uh, flex in the tongue. So you said you were going to shorten it. No, well actually uh, what we're doing right now is we're actually putting three more cross members and those cross members are getting welded to the actual tongue. Oh, I see. So it'll go from like here to here. Yep. So and no, super... from actually under on the bottom is being cut out as a U shape oh, and it's going to get welded onto the actual tongue. Got it. That's actually, I'm actually working on that right now. Even the inside of this, uh, this square tubing. I mean, you even got the, the middle support. I don't know the actual yep. name of that. It's called double square. Double square instead of the single square. I mean, you're really just going all above and beyond here. Yep. Gladly, I knew which way to put it, so it's... it's all <laughs> oh, instead of, instead of rotating down. at 90 degrees? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, guy, this guy's smart, man. If you guys need trailer work or upholstery or anything else, trailer work and upholstery, that's storage. what you guys... We yeah, have storage. a storage yard, upholstery, yes. trailer work. Yeah, trailer sales, of course. Yeah. When you're doing like big heavy duty aluminum like this in order to take it is just it's really not realistic so spool feeding it is the way to go it's going to meet heat the metal enough to actually weld it together instead of getting cracks on the line or something like that but either way it's going to be like totally overbuilt as a trailer and uh we're gonna be really happy with it we're gonna be really happy with it so he's using a hydraulic jack to make sure that this this double double dip 9000 beam it's dialed in to a tenth of a thousandth you said you want it to drive right straight so I mean, this is like this is what makes it ride straight right this is, i mean oh it's the position of the axles and the tongue no just, basically yeah just that and a square from there yeah you can tell this isn't your first rodeo what welding or just building? slapping a trailer together i mean normally a standard trailer takes us Exactly two days and the trailer's back on the road. Really? Yeah. Is that good? Mister, give your two senses here. What do you think, Barry? Pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. It, it looks, this could handle like a huge U-boat. What do you think about these torsion axles? Pretty cool, a set of leaf springs. Man, oh man, that is gonna be rock solid. 12 ply tires, 15 inch wheels. I mean, he's really going all out, isn't he? It's really amazing, I mean, even with the way you drive, I think it'll hold up. <laughs> well, we're going to find out, aren't we? I saw him pull in today. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, good. you drive a truck like that, you can't drive it slow. <laughs> that looks fantastic. It does, doesn't it? He does an amazing job. So, obviously, everything's going to be powder coated. We're going to build some really nice. Well, Dan, Daniel, 
Built some really nice wheel wells for it. We're gonna slap the Apogee logo on it everywhere. Nice. We're gonna laser it, so we're gonna do decals on the side, powder coat, paint. Give me the decals. I'm cutting them on tomorrow and shipping Thursday. Oh, I'm, perfect. I'm, so I'm, I can get them by Monday. Great. As big as literally as big as we can get it on an I beam, I want it on both yeah, sides. I can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can be here to here. Yeah, yeah. Well, slightly smaller. You funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for for sure here, like you know, oh, half that's inch. That's yeah, I, I can do this whole inside, or you can go to here and wrap. But as soon as this might, this will kind of wrap okay. Yeah, but you know, powder to it, so. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't put my stickers on until you come. You know what would be sick is to put the sticker on, powder coat over it, and then peel them off. Can't do that. They'll melt. Well, I no, no, no. I've got, I've got uh, stickers that'll go up to 800 degrees. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, you I'd rather put clean stickers over the powder coat yeah. Yeah. than have the uh, bare aluminum. Yeah, I it agree. It wants to uh, corrode and. You think the stickers will stay on the powder coat? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, they'll stick to powder coat for sure, yeah. for sure. I mean, just the view up here alone shows you the mirror size of this thing. Cannot wait to get the other axe on, but obviously they're leaving one on for now to easily move it around. A couple more supports to go before we bring it up to Bradenton. Once we bring it up to Bradenton, we can use a forklift to set it on top to mount all the bunks perfectly. We got a couple other things to do. Then it goes off to powder coat, paint, electrical for lighting. This is going to be a VIN plated official trailer, and we're slapping Apogee Industries logos all over it because he's crushing it on his trailer. A very crucial part of a boat is the water pump and the placement of it below the water line. And I really don't know if this pump I bought from Summit is going to be enough without having to prime it every single time. I wanna eliminate like that ball valve. So really the only legitimate way to test this is by hooking it up to the battery on my brand new truck directly with no relays or fuses and sticking this hose into this bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't think of I mean, another what way What do you got, do about it. 10 foot of hose there? Probably about 10 foot of hose. It's really only gonna be about a, ten, a three foot section between like the water line and the actual pump. But my thought process is, if it can pull through this, then it should be fine, right? Oh yeah, 10 foot, I mean, you're gonna be good if it can suck from that far. So something, something's about to happen when I connect this connector, and I'm hoping water comes flying out of it. I mean, we got loop-de-doos and uphill, so if this works, it's gonna be pretty good. All right, here we oh, go. Oh, he deutscht his own battery, look at this guy. This is not impressive. It's not sound successful. Less yeah, I think you're gonna need a lot less distance. A lot less distance and probably a primer. Eh, if it's below the water line though, it's gravity the, is gonna be pushing it. The problem is this thing just, it doesn't sound that impressive, did it? As a no, water pump? it didn't sound like it had a whole lot of flow. Yeah. Oh. You need like a uh, Davis Craig or something, you know? This really just sets back my whole project by like a week. <laughs> Well, let's try it with some shorter hose. Or maybe there's a, I'm sure there's Davis Craig around here somewhere at Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. <laughs> <The> Walmart. <laughs> Walmart basically. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so it's a shorter hose. All right, how about now, how about now? So close. I don't think your pickup tube's in the water. No, it's for sure in the water. Is it? The pump's not there. Oh, it's full, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, that pump doesn't sound right. Yes. Honestly. So you need a pump that's going to actually draw it. That's actually going to have some suction to it. Yep. Okay. Back, Back to the drawing, to the drawing board. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Current situation is working on the wiring. It is so freaking hot outside right now that I don't even want to think about opening that tarp. So I'm working on some electrical. Sitting here next to Mullet. And we have this race wire solutions relay box. Relay box is going to control everything from the water pumps. There's even a kill switch on here that's hooked to this Deutsch. And then I order this nice billet, uh, you know, kill switch. So if that, that cord gets pulled, so I'm gonna mount that right here on the side of the box. This is gonna go inside of here. All the wiring is gonna come out this hole. This hole was already here. My plan was to kind of go out the bottom, but there's really just not enough room for this relay box to be going all the wires out the bottom. So I'm just gonna use this existing hole and probably dress it up with some rubber once it's all done or seal it off with some silicone. But yeah, this is kind of just right now's project. All 
I didn't get much done, but halfway got this mounted in here. I'm still gonna have to take it out again once I start zip tying and heat shrinking everything together. But I did get this kill switch involved. So when I got this around my leg, if this comes out, it'll kill power to everything. So a little extra safety thing. I think you actually have to have this legally on a boat, but I wanted to do it because I know we're gonna be ripping this thing. Okay, we're on day like 347 of working on this river boat. It's literally been a project since last April and I'm gonna turn around the camera and show you what I've been getting done and I finally figured out what to do for the priming system. This is not on the market yet, but I am about to show you it because it's super sick. Here's what we got going on the boat. Obviously we have got the batteries mounted up. Y'all seen that we got an XS 12 volt battery with a XS super bank. And the starters are going to feed off of this guy. I've already got those two wired together. Got a motion race works, touch can mounted up. Got the engine mount here, which has been powder coated. In the back, we have our VSC fuel water separator and fuel filter. So those fittings are going to go over here to this fuel pressure regulator and up to the engine. And then we have our clear view system, which is for the water filtration. Pretty cool piece but the only problem is I gotta get this thing primed. And Clearview has developed a new product that's gonna mount right here. And basically what it does is it primes the system with water so that I don't have to have a pump sucking out of dry. So the reason for the development of this product is so that you can prime your engine without having to start it. So you hook up an eight millimeter drive to it like on a drill and you can pump oil through your engine before you even start it which is absolutely brilliant and he has not released this product yet it's in development still but he's like hey slap one of these things on that river boat so that's what we're gonna do and hopefully it works got a couple extra t fittings going on he and i have been working together on how to mount it up exactly because it's kind of confusing but so far it's coming together good obviously you've seen the updates on the engine and uh you know we're just waiting on parts basically for that but dylan is coming by today i believe to start laying some ocean grip or templating it out it's going to be running up all these boards through here going to be looking real nice oh another issue i have is this steering rod is interfering with the battery here so we're going to have to put a little kink in that and then i've also got my switch panel mounted up right here for my turn it on Ignition to the ECU, starter, water pump, fuel pump, bilge pump, lights, and then accessory one, two, and three. And that's gonna feed back into the box that I sit on here. So a lot of wiring to do left, but that'll come last after we get everything mounted up. So right now I'm gonna work on getting this primer system mounted to the front of the clear view. We don't have much riverboat content to do today. We have a ton of fittings that are coming in tomorrow to help lay out like the plumbing system and stuff. So I really don't have much more to do today. We're gonna wrap this boat back up. Dylan's gonna come out and template it. Hopefully we can get that ocean grip in soon because we're working around on that. So it's gonna be a lot nicer on my knees. I lost my wedding band. It was gold. I lost it in the ocean like an absolute idiot, but I was actually kind of okay with it because it was scratching my truck. And as a car guy, I'm always working on stuff. So I ended up with a silicone ring. These are tough rings. And people say, hey, silicone wedding bands, they get kind of sweaty. These actually have little breathable holes in them. But I'm gonna demonstrate to you what would happen if you were working on your car. And let's say this metal rod is your finger and you got something, you're getting real close and you're drilling all of a sudden, look at that. This thing will actually break away instead of ripping your skin off. So not only are these things durable, I mean, look at how much I can stretch one of these. They look cool and they're also a great safety factor for those who are always hands deep working on their car, boat or truck, whatever it is. So if you use my code RPM, if you buy one ring, you get two for free. So it's a great deal. You also get free shipping. Check them out. They got tons of cool colors. We got here ourselves a whole bunch of fittings that are about Dash 12. We're doing all crimp fittings from Fergola, so that's done right. We got our lines. I'm going to start putting these things on here. Uh, one thing I am going to show you guys, 
When this filter does fill up with sand and debris, I'm not going to be able to take it off because of the wood here. It interferes. So I have to get like a piece of aluminum, like a one by three inch piece of aluminum tubing and run it across and mount everything out just a hair. But I also want to show you all why I'm putting like a ball valve in here and why we're going to be running this pump so that we can prime the system. There's a lot of stuff going on right here, a lot of fittings, and so watch me as I kind of mock all this stuff up and we'll see how it goes. Get your two pickups here. Instead of them coming up and over the back and through those two holes there, everything's nice and low below the water line. Coming inside, coming inside, one of those lines is gonna feed into the end portion of this valve here. Another one's gonna tee off. And the reason why it's gonna tee off, one of those end portions is gonna come here and the other one's gonna tee. And it's gonna, I'm sorry, it's gonna Y to this footing here. It's gonna Y and Y of it's gonna put, one portion of it's gonna come into this side, the other portion is gonna come into the primer. The primer is going to feed down and up and into this T here with this ball valve, even though this already has a check valve. That way I can completely control which way the water is coming through this line. This is the out, which is gonna go to the water pump and then split off into the engine. I also have a bilge pump mounted up here that's gonna sit directly underneath the engine. We have our Water separator and fuel filters here, battery power here, catch can there, and this is just a lot of work. These crimp fittings, I kind of really don't know how to do them. And so I'm waiting until the boys show up to work next week. That way Jackson can show me how to do this the right way because these fittings are like 20, 30 bucks a piece. I just want to make sure that when I do it, it's literally perfect. And uh, you really only get one shot at them. It's not like a normal and hose end but we're getting close i definitely have some more fittings to order luckily i can dig through this shop over here and kind of find some that are appropriate size but we're getting close we're getting close and i like the way things are starting to look and uh gosh dang this is a freaking project I taped it off before I'm cutting it. Oh, I hate that sound. Clean cut, clean cut. I know it's probably not how you're supposed to always cut AN lines. I've seen a million other ways to do it, but that's how I'm going to do it. Now, in theory, when I Bring this hose through here. Should be able to connect it to the end portion on the, what is this? That'd be the port side. Let's see if we can squeeze this fitting in there without taking that tape off. Yep, we got it. Nice. Nice. Clean. Clean cut. There we go. Looks like we know what we're doing. Basically, the water gets picked up here, comes through this 45 crimp fitting dash 10, goes into another 45 crimp 10, into the pass through, which is just Held in with one bolt right now, nothing's tight yet. Turned into a dash 12 in, which, yeah, you can argue all you want, but who really cares? It's dash 12 to dash 10 in. And now we need to do the starboard side, which is gonna be a little bit more complicated because I'm gonna have to tee it off. And the reason I'm gonna have to tee it off is because one of these sides has to go to the inside of the primer. The other side, it goes to the inside of the filter. So once I have the system primed, then I can then close this ball valve and there's a check valve on the bottom of the primer. So that way the water only comes through the inside and the inside of the filter and out this dash 12 into the splitter.
and into the water right, guys i'm not gonna lie i lost my wedding ring within one year of being married <laughs> my wife cried it fell in the ocean and it was 100 percent my fault but luckily tough rings stepped up to the plate and they make these silicone rings with over like 20 different colors look at how strong these things are i mean i'm yanking on it you got these little holes you can breathe on and right now they are running a special. You can get three rings for the price of one. It's a $105 value for 35 bucks if you use the code RPM on their website. And I'll include a link in the description. All right, guys. Well, that wraps it up for the first progression video on the boat. Obviously, we have a long way to go, but we're getting closer. We're about 80% of the way down with the water lines. Then we got to work on fuel lines, electrical. Hopefully, by then, the engine will be ready to go in and we can rip this thing. So, we got a deadline of June 14th, which is about three weeks away. And so do I think we're gonna make it? It's gonna be close. So make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you on the next video.